All right, we're going live on Facebook. All right, y'all ready? Back there? And we're going to look at some of the comments before we get into the Word again and show y'all some very interesting things about Facebook, how to tackle, how to go on Facebook and minister, all right? All right. All right. How to minister that Word on Facebook. And we're going to start off with me and Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, all right, giving people the truth. We're going to have some fun. So y'all sit back, as soon as they get it. We're able to do this, right? That's what I was told now. That's what I heard. There's some interesting comments. And since Facebook is so popular, and since you all are Christian, Uh, since you all got some word inside of you all, that ought to add up to a plus. I mean, you're not afraid, are you? You're not easily intimidated, are you? Oh, that sound good. That sound good. That sound good. And you are you all are witnesses, right? For Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Whoa. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Because it's amazing the foolishness and stuff that be on that. It don't make no sense, boy, the West people think. But you know what? That gives us the opportunity to minister the word. That gives us the opportunity to minister God's word. We're going to have some fun tonight. As soon as they get it up, how long is this going to take? You know, I'm getting in. I know I need to repent. How long is it going to take back there? About three more minutes? Okay, I can wait three more minutes. I'm ready to go. Say what now? Oh, that's fine. We can be live. They'll learn something too. I mean, Jesus did nothing in the car. We ain't going to do it either. We're just going to minister the gospel. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Minister. Get y'all surprised I'm out here this early. <laughs> I was here before y'all got here. So why y'all surprised? I've been here before y'all got, got here. You all, um, you didn't get, y'all didn't get a chance. Y'all heard about uh, the U.S. pulling out their troops out of Syria, right? Y'all haven't got a chance to hear what Donald Trump, the president, said this afternoon. But well, y'all going to hear it before you leave here. You all going to hear it. Y'all going to hear it. It was moving. It was really moving. Because he's getting a lot of pushback from folks. But you're going to, y'all going to hear it for yourself. You're going to hear what he said. And it makes a whole lot of sense. That's right. It makes a whole lot of sense. Well, children, how was your day in school? Those of you that's here. Huh? Bless? No problem? No problem whatsoever. Wow. Age? And no B. You said no problem. That means everything is excellent. Right? No problem. So we got all A's and no B's, right? Huh? I see some parents kind of looking. <laughs> like, who you who child you talking about? All right. How many, how many got A's? Oh, okay, look at that, Courtney. You go ahead, Courtney. All right, okay, and a, and a sister. It runs in the family, don't it? Oh, oh, how about that? And Ma say amen. It runs in the family. It runs in the family. Now, let me tell you something, uh, bro. You can't let your sister beat you, all right? You represent the man. You understand that? You're going to have to come up now. We can't have that now. We cannot have that. We're going to have to do some. We got to do some things, all right, bro? Hey, you got to uphold the manhood here. That's right. It's like, man, come on. Come on, bro. You got to do some things. That's right. Boy, don't let them sisters out do you, all right? They don't double-team you, do they? 
But you know what, though? You're still the man. So that shouldn't bother you. You should tell them, bring it on. That's all you got. <laughs> That's right. That's what you ought to be doing. That's right. All right. That's right, boy. You got to bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Is everybody having a good time in school, huh? How many of you enjoy going to school? Let me see here. Well, I know who ain't got A's. <laughs> I know who ain't got B's. Oh, when you got A's and B's, you enjoy going to school. When you, especially when you got them A's, boy, you, you want to show it off. Why? That's what you do. But when you're struggling in school, it's like, man, I want to be doing something else. But you got to realize you can't do much else unless you get a good education. That's right. You cannot do that. All right, y'all ready? I was trying to get this chance. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going on the screen, right? Let's see here. Uh, we need some. Okay, I think you all going to probably have to read the comments. All right? Let's see. Now, when you all go on Facebook, the purpose of it is to minister the word to help people understand the truth. Because there are people out there that know for sure they are absolutely right. And the only way to help them to see if they're not right is by giving them the word or by telling them, the truth. Now this is um, this is Franklin Graham here. He made a statement today pertaining to President Trump pulling out the truth out of Syria, all right? Um, so just, you're going to need a mic back there. Read since everybody can't see that and we can't enlarge it, right? Can that be enlarged so everybody can see it or? Oh, okay. I can read it. It says, today. Well, let me ask you something. Can we, can we cut more of these lights off with a little bit? Help. Yeah, let's cut. Uh, just don't cut me off. All right, yeah. You didn't cut the screen. Yeah, the screen's still on. The screen still on. What's wrong? <laughs> I'm catching up. <laughs> I'm catching up. I am here. Now, I want you to listen to this comment. You're going to read it as you hear it, all right? Go ahead. Um, Franklin Graham, today I ask that you join Let me. Let me start for a minute. Are we live? Yes, we are. Okay. Those of you on Facebook, we're talking about things that's happening in our area and how to deal with it as a Christian. The Bible says if you're a Christian, we have the right to stand up for the truth and to minister the word of the Lord. We have that right to do it. Even though a lot of people don't do it, they're scared. We have a right to do it. But for about 20 minutes, we're going to be talking about Facebook because Facebook can be a good tool for Christians to use to help people see the truth. All right? That's the purpose of it. All right, go ahead. It says, today I ask you to join me in praying for the lives affected by the White House decision to pull U.S. troops out of northern Syria. Both Democrats and Republican leaders in Washington are deeply concerned because this would be, in essence, abandoning our closest allies in the region, the Kurdish people. The Kurds are the ones who have been leading the fight against ISIS in Syria. Also pray for Christians in northern Syria who the Kurds have been protecting. Would you pray with me that President Donald J. Trump would reconsider Many thousands of lives hang in the balance. Okay. Now, that was from Franklin Graham. Now, this is um, Apostle Bush's response that he sent to him. It has to take a few minutes. 
Okay, here it is, Apostle. It says, so are you willing to send American sons and daughters to be sacrificed for a cause that will never bring peace to that area? Okay, I now, wonder. Okay, now stop for a minute. I asked him that question because he didn't say anything about the sons and daughters that go over there and get killed. He didn't say nothing about America, but they, that's what folks, but they are concerned. Now let me explain something to you. According to the Bible, They've been battling for centuries. And the only time peace is going to come to that region is when Jesus comes back. Now, Franklin Graham is supposed to be a preacher of the gospel. He's supposed to be. So that's telling me that there will be no peace in that area until Jesus actually come back. He's the one that's going to bring peace. But what I'm looking at now is would you, how many sons and daughters did he talk about that go there and get killed? Now listen, okay, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I wonder, oh. I wonder would you put on a uniform or allow your family members to put on a uniform to go and fight against a cause that only Christ can bring peace to? I thank God and Jesus Christ for our president, for what our president is doing. It's time for America to stop sending their sons and their daughters to be slaughtered and maimed. So as a pastor, I am praying the opposite, that they would come home and serve the Lord. So the question is, are you willing to go to the front lines, not the back of the line, over there? Are you willing to send your family members to the front line to be slaughtered in a battle that hasn't been declared officially a war? Okay, stop for a minute. Because it had me. It had not. They, they, these people are going over there. They're sacrificing our um, American people going over there in a battle that have not been declared a war. Because if you declare it a war, you're going to have to go, you're going to go there and wipe them out. But they won't do that. But what they do, they send out people over there and let them get shot at, made, restrict them, tell them what they can't do. They go over there to a foreign country, and then they claim that they, they, they want to claim they're justified. So the question is, will you suit up? And wait, don't go over there and sit behind a desk job. Don't work from a tent. No, you go on the front line. Are you willing to go on the front line? Are you willing to send your children, your son, your daughter, your husband, wife on the front line there and let them get slaughtered? Go ahead. Then it says, praying that you would reevaluate your thinking, signed Apostle Southern Bush Jr. Then we had comments so far. Okay. <laughs> One lady by the name of Susan, she said, thank you. My guys served their time no more. Okay. Then we just had another one about 46 minutes ago from Bruce. Hold, hold it. Um, I don't know ridiculous comments, though. We got some more we need to go to. Is that a ridiculous one? It's a question. Well, okay, go ahead. This person named Bruce says, can you provide documentation as to how U.S. troops are being slaughtered in northern Syria? Wait a minute, they're coming home in body bag. Where you at? Actually, okay. Where, where you been? Ask them where you been. Do you live in America? Jesus. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's move on to the next one. Because this, now this is, the next one um, is some folk try to use God in stuff, but they don't read their Bibles, and you can tell they don't. That's why you need to study to show yourself approved so you won't be ashamed. All right? And the next comment we're going to read is uh, someone talking about trying to bring God involved in it, whenever you get it, all right? And you know what you do? If those of you that are saved and the Holy Spirit dealing with you, it, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to minister, whether it's on Facebook, in the street. He wants the Holy Spirit want to use you to bring attention to the truth. And you shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't be a coward. If you're a Christian, you got no business being afraid of a coward. You should be, matter of fact, there should be, 
there should be a desire inside of you to want to help people see it the Lord's way, the right way. And the reason why we can say it the right way, because it goes line up with the word. Now, if it don't line up with the word, it ain't the right way. And everybody ain't going to agree with you. Everybody ain't going to like it. So whether you do it or not, everybody ain't going to like it. So why not do what the Lord said and be a witness um, while you're here on this earth? Let the Lord use you to help people see the truth. All right? Let me know when you're ready with the next one. All right? It's amazing. That thing really stirred my spirit this afternoon. Uh, you know, the comments and stuff that came in, it's like, man, what's wrong with these folks? Now, you want everybody else to go over there and fight, but you won't go. You got your little comment. You want to go over there and send everybody else, but you don't want to go over there. That's hypocritical. That's hypocritical. And let me tell you something. As long as you're alive, you're never too old to fight. All right? You can't find another one. No, sir, but I do have one where um, you said you were praying against, and someone says, don't pray, vote. Oh, tell them I'm voting, vote. too. I'm going to vote, too. I'm doing both. Praying and voting. Exactly. Standing and voting, all right? I'm doing that. And if they want to see my record, they can. What about you? Are you voting? All right? See, that's how you got to deal with folks. You can't sit there and let folks, you go, okay, you go open up something, then you can't close it. <laughs> Best thing to do is keep your mouth shut. The Bible calls it being ashamed. You, you've been made ashamed. Why? Because you said something and you ain't got nothing to back it up. That's why you need to study. That's why you need to study the word and let the Holy Spirit use you. And the Holy Spirit will use you. He will use you. All right? Then another person, they said, genuine asking, prayers, yes. So why did he do this? Withdraw the troops, please. I'm genuinely wondering and asking. Okay. Tell them to go on. What will you, you record that clip on Facebook or YouTube? Um, YouTube from President. Go on YouTube and look at the comments, the address the president said this afternoon, why he doing it. And if that don't touch your heart, if that don't move you, you ain't alive. You just ain't alive. You just not alive. All right? And, um, well, we're going to show it in a little while anyway. Are they watching us? I don't know if they are watching. Oh, but we don't get the thing. Okay, you hadn't found it yet? Okay. It was like 17,000 comments. Okay. Well, anyway, this lady um, said she um, text. She was praying that the president would change his mind too because that's what God wants. Now, that's not what God wants. So um, my reply back to her, if God was involved in this, if you want to find out what God wants, read Joshua. Go to Joshua. Read the book of Joshua. God will go in there. If God wanted you to go in there, God will go in there. And it don't take no three years no 15 years for God to finish what he's doing. He'll go in there in days or months, wipe it out. That's what God will do. So a lot of folks want to put God in it God in it, because they have no idea who God is. God, ain't no way in the world God will keep anybody in a war that long. He won't. God is a winner. Do y'all understand that? If you don't understand it, read, read, read Joshua, Moses, David, Read, read, read it for yourself, and you'll see what God is. But that's the kind of comments that's coming in there. And then the Christians. My question is, where are the Christians? Because the Holy Spirit, I, He's here. What what is wrong with Christians? Um, now there's some Christians out there that will come back, and bring the truth. But then this whole country is supposed to, supposed to be a Christian nation. Supposed to be. But where are they? And what's happening is you hear more talk from the liberal. You, you hear more talk from people that have no idea what God will do or Christ than you hear from the Christian. And the question is why? Where are the Christians? The one that's reading the Bible, one that's following the word, 
one that's learning about Christ, where are they? What, what's, what's, what's happening here? What, what, I, I couldn't go on there and read a comment like that and just pass by. I have to say something because that's what's in me. It's in me to stand up for the truth, not sit down there and act like something different, all right? Let's read a few more of those comments. Um, this one, um, person responded back to Graham and said, you reap what you sow, Reverend, and you sowed approval for this man, talking about the president. He cares nothing for you, only for what you can do for him. You go ahead and pray for him, and I'll pray for the Christians and the Kurds. You know what? That, that's the comment I sent that person back. Well, yeah. Somebody said that President don't care for folk, but wait a minute. Who's bringing them home? Right. Wait a minute, who's bringing them home? It ain't the Republicans. It ain't the Democrats. Who's bringing them home? Who, who's saying enough is enough? Now, you can run your mouth all you want and say what he don't do, but look at what he's doing. He's bringing them home. He's actually bringing them home. And you're going to see why he said he's bringing them home. All right? Okay, any more? Yes, sir. Okay. The holy rollies are starting to roll on Trump. <laughs> Evidently, we roll it on you, too, because <laughs> you come in. Evidently, we must be rolling on you. Evidently, we don't roll on Because <laughs> you're making the comment. But praise the Lord, we love you anyway. That's what you sent them back, all right? Okay. This one says, I will pray that the Holy Spirit will lead President Trump in wisdom and discernment. There's much that we don't know that we, okay, there's much that we don't know that we don't know. So I'm praying safety over God's people. That's why he's bringing them home. Get tired of folk going over there, being shot at, can't shoot back, booby trap, and stuff like that. Don't know who the enemy is, and you got them over there. And you want to justify, uh-uh. This battle here, over those folk over there in the east, they have been fighting for centuries. And according to the scriptures, they're going to fight like that, it's going to be an uproar until peace comes. And Jesus is the one that's going to bring peace to the earth. Ain't no, ain't no nation going to bring peace to the earth. But matter of fact, Jesus said when you said peace and safety, it's going to break, that's when it's really going to break loose. I'm telling you, Jesus, the Bible said Jesus is the God of peace. And if you're a believer, you can rest in that. But if you're not, a, if you're a non-believer, it ain't going to work for you anyway, whether you rest or not. Why? Because Jesus is the one that's going to bring peace to that area. No nation, no kingdom, no president, whoever is going to bring peace. Jesus is going to bring peace to that area. It's going, and then look how long these folk been fighting each other. That's right. But what, what's wrong is this. Whenever God sent Moses, Joshua, or David in the battle, he sent them there with wisdom. And they defeated their enemy. All right, we sending people over there. No, I'm not, but they are. They want to send people over there and tell them you can't shoot. You got to hold. You got to wait till you being shot at. Let me ask you something. Show me in the Bible where God sent them to war and said, "Wait till you being shot at." I want you to show me in the Bible where God told Joshua, "I want you to go over there to the Promised Land and don't do nothing." Until they do something to you. I want, I want to see it. I want in my Bible. Because I don't know what kind of Bible you got. I know I got the real Bible. All right? I want to see it. Things like that. And people need to know that. Because you know what? One person will go on there and make a false statement. And 100,000 will believe it. Why? It's not challenge. Are y'all afraid to challenge folks? I'm not. I'll challenge you. I'll look you in your face and challenge you with the word. I'm not afraid. And that's why it's so important to understand, as Christians, the Lord gives us the right to stand up and voice what the Lord says. It's not our opinion. They say it's our opinion, but it's from the word. If it was our opinion, it wouldn't be from the word. All right? 
What else you got back there? I'm having fun. It just stirred me up, boy. Bring we it have. on. <laughs> Bring it on. This um, lady, Rita, she said, I support President Trump's decision. We, he knows what he is doing. Thank you, God Almighty, for guiding our president, giving him wisdom. God bless and protect the Kurdish people. Give them strength and courage. Thank you for bringing our troops home safe. Your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's right. Now, that's the problem. When you don't have Jesus, yeah. and most of them over there are not saved. Most of them over there are not saved, and that's why all this turmoil is going on. So those of you that don't want it to stop, won't you go over there? Won't you suit up and go over there? Won't you get on the front line and give yourself as a sacrifice? Because that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. God never fought a battle like this. When you, how many? All of you read your Bible, right? God, when God, when God stepped in, God stepped in and stepped out. It it would never take. And the thing about it, back then, all they had was bow and arrows, swords, camels, and horses. And it didn't take them this long. We've been in Afghanistan for years, folks. I mean, it's been years. They're, they have anniversaries now. It's been years we've been over there. It wouldn't take God that long. God, you know, God, you know why? God don't play. He don't play with the devil. He didn't. And when you read the Old Testament, what you see is this. When God ever raised up a general or a leader to go and defend Israel, they go over there and wipe out. Whoever God say wipe out, I mean annihilate. Now, God, now I'm going to say this now. God said, God said wipe out everybody. From the youngest to the greatest, wipe them out. That's what God you know what God was saying? I'm finished with it. <laughs> God left a statement. I'm finished. That's God. God said, I'm finished with this. You want to raise up? You want to act a fool? I'm finished with you. And God will finish him. And believe me, when Joshua and David came out, they, they were finished. There was nobody left. Nobody left. That's what God does. God don't play with the devil. God never did. And he don't play. These folk here that's uh, making these foolish comments, you know why? Most of them are not saved. Most of them don't even know, know anything about God. They don't read the word. Even the Bible tells you about God. If you ever read the old, if you, if you just read some of the Old Testament, you'll find that God don't play. Man, what God did with the first world? God destroyed the, God destroyed the whole world. Quicker. <laughs> God destroyed a whole world quicker than these folk. And they got tanks, planes, they got all kinds of intelligence. Where's intelligence at? Where, where's intelligence at? If, you, if it takes you that long to wipe out the enemy, where is your intelligence? Huh? Go ahead. Uh, this is a live comment. Teresa from California asked a question in a statement. He might be bringing them home, but who's going to help them like they helped us when we needed help? I don't think we should have turned our back on them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When we needed help, wait a minute, hold on, let's go back. First of all, they need to be saved. If they get saved, the Lord will help them. Just like the Lord helped this country. The reason why she can make a comment, because the Lord is helping this country. So you send that back to her. The reason why she's making a comment, because the Lord is, now if they will turn to Christ, turn to Jesus, the Lord will help them too, because he said he would. Now, we have no business over in a nation, first of all, that do not want to serve the Lord, and do not want to do what's right, and allow our people to go over there and be slaughtered. And then ask her, when is she going to sign up and go? She's here. Won't she, huh? She's hearing you live. Yeah, won't she sign up and go? The mamas and daddies, 
that lose their sons and daughters over there, it's devastating to them. And the thing about it, this is not a war, a declared war. Y'all know, y'all understand that, right? right. This, this is nothing but a mess. Nothing but a mess where the devil is killing our, our Americans, killing them, basic for nothing, because ain't nothing changed. And it ain't going to change. Oh, ice is coming back. You know why? They over there. Hey, the only thing, the only way that area is going to see peace, Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to come. That's it. That's it. So if you're so up against that, why don't you sign up and go? You can volunteer. They taking men and women now. They taking the other kind now. Won't you sign up and go? Now you, you know what? But you won't do it. You won't do it. Why? Because you know that's a terrible place. All right? Yeah. This comment um, from Steve. Glad they are pulling them out. It's a fishy story, and our troops shouldn't even be there. That's For right. one, they're Muslims, and we really don't trust Muslims with fighting ISIS. That's an right. An enemy against an enemy. They may be having our troops. They may be having our troops kill innocent people and calling them ISIS. I pray everyone that don't know Jesus to seek him, God's only begotten son, the joy to know him and experience. He gave up his life for the whole world. Okay, I'm done preaching. Now, but I ain't though. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> now, what he's saying is exactly the truth. And what you're going to see as the president talk here, you're going to find out that that's what happened. They trained one of those guys, gave him a gun, he took the gun, and killed an American. So if, you, if you're so up against what the president did, won't you sign up? There's got to be a, a Navy, Army, a Marine, that, somewhere close where you can go and sign up and get, out, get in there and go, that, go over there and fight. Why don't you do it? But you ain't going to do it. You want to send somebody else over there, and you sit at home and criticize this president because he got tired of seeing sons and daughters coming home in casket draped with the American flag. He got t well, all right. You know what? I tell you, we're gonna do. We're gonna do this. We're gonna play that video. His what he said. What what you said about what? How many minutes long? It's about ten minutes. About ten minutes long. I want you to listen to what the president said. We're going to pray it, and then we're going to pray it again at the end of the service. And if this don't touch your heart, you did. You ain't lie. You ain't lie. All right? So y'all get it ready and make sure we can hear it. You know, that's what, but the thing about it, now that guy that stood up, so that's somebody else up there standing up for the truth. But what about you? What about you all here? How many of you stand up for the truth? How many of you stand up and just say, you know what, I don't agree with um, what's going on because the Bible don't agree with it. Or you just sit there, like some of you do, and hide in your clothes. <laughs> your clothes is not only a covering, it's your hiding place. You just hide. Why? Are you too scared. As Christians, we're supposed to stand up for the truth. As Christians, we're supposed to tell the people the truth. And I'm not going to stand, sit by. I don't care whether you call me a devil. I'm going to still tell you what the Lord said. And then let the Lord figure out, finish what he's going to do. All right? Let me know when you're ready now. Yes, go ahead. It's amazing. And that Franklin Graham, I know I get a response back from him. But then if he's so against what, uh, what the president did, why don't he go? Why don't he go over there? Or if you, you're against it, why don't you sign up and go? I mean, you can, you, you never, if you can walk, if you can run a little bit, hey, sign up, go on over there. And if you're so gung-ho about it, just, just bypass basic training and go on over there. Get you, get, let them sign you a weapon, and you, if you so, if you that, so, then you start seeing the hypocrisy in it. Go ahead. Apostle, when the scripture talks about if a man doesn't take care of his own household, he's worse than the infidel. With mm -hmm. the president being over the country, that's what he's doing. He's taking care of America. That's what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. And these folk, these liberal folk, want to rise up against him, but then they don't want to go over there. 
I mean, you can go over there. You can get you a passport, get you a plane ticket, and fly right on over there. You can get you a one-way ticket and fly it over there. And when you get over there, don't, don't be in a tent. Don't be sitting behind a desk. No, you go on the front line. You get out there where the battle is going. That's what you do. And let's see what's going to happen. And remember, when you get out there, they're going to tell you you can't shoot at them unless they shoot at you. Nowhere in the Bible did God ever tell Israel, no way, when I send you to battle, you wait till they shoot. Uh-uh. God said, let me tell you something. When I send you to battle, it's to go battle. It's to go wipe them out and go on about your business. That's what it, and that's what I like about God. God don't play with the devil at all. Yes, go ahead. My um, ex-husband was stationed over in that region of the country, and they couldn't even draw guns yeah, I know. on children. There was an incident where one of the soldiers had dropped his loaded weapon on the ground, and a child, one of the uh, country's children, picked it up. They could not raise their weapon. They had to try and talk the child into giving them back that loaded weapon. Uh, they, they could not raise their weapon. And, they, and you, and you, do you want to go over there? Let me see the hands of those of you who want to go over there and fight. Well, if you don't want to go over there, why do you think they want to go? All right, you ready? I want y'all to listen to this, all right? Go ahead. And the answer would be, if we make the right deal, I'd love to do it. I think it would be a great thing for China also. They seem to be reluctant. The Attorney General, highly respect. Our alliances, in many cases, have taken tremendous advantage of us. Now, this is the uh, speech he made this afternoon, a few hours ago, as to why he made the decision that he made. Now, listen, I want y'all to read. In addition to that, we, we, tr we have spent tremendous amounts of money uh, on helping the Kurds in terms of ammunition, in terms of weapons, in terms of money, in terms of pay. With all of that being said, we like the Kurds. Now, you have different factions in there. Again, you have PKK. That's a different faction. Uh, and they worked with us. It's a rough group, but they worked with us. But we've spent a tremendous — and they're fighting for their land. So when you say they're fighting with us, yes, but they're fighting for the land. Now, if we go on the theory that some of the folks in Washington oh, go by, okay. who all do very well with the military, now, did you hear what he said? How many of you understood what he said? He said, the reason why they're fighting, they're fighting for their own land. They ain't fighting for our land. They ain't helping us. They're fighting for their own land. All right? Go ahead. Industrial complex. I mean, you know, the military industrial complex, take a look at Dwight Eisenhower. He had it figured right many years ago. It's got tremendous power. They like fighting. They make a lot of money when they fight. But it was time to bring our soldiers back home. So I see, and I will tell you, the hardest thing I have to do, by far, much harder than the witch hunt, is signing letters to parents of soldiers that have been killed. And it's not only that, in areas where there's not a lot of upside, if there's any upside at all, and in many cases, there's only downside. And especially when that soldier was killed in a blue-on-green attack. You know what that is, right? That's where a soldier being trained or whatever turns his gun on an American soldier. Here, son, take your gun. You know how to use it. And he takes the gun and he turns it and he shoots one. We have many of them in Afghanistan, in particular in Afghanistan. The hardest thing I have to do is signing those letters. That's the hardest thing I have to do. And each letter is different. We make each letter different. And last week, I signed five of them for Afghanistan, one in Iraq, one in Syria from two weeks ago. And sometimes I call the parents. Sometimes I see the parents. I go to Dover when I can, but it's, it's, it's so devastating for the parents that, you know, it's, it's so devastating. When they, when they bring uh, that boy or young woman out of the back of those big, powerful planes in a coffin, and the parents are there. You know, we have people that do that. That's what they do. They, 
they, they work that, they accommodate everybody. That's what they do. They do an incredible job. And they said, I said, the parents seem to be okay. I'll get there early. The parents seem to be okay. Well, actually, sir, they are. No, no, the way they're talking, they're really okay, aren't they? Sir, you never know until the back of that massive cargo plane opens up and they walk down holding a coffin with four or five great soldiers on each side of it representing our various forces. That you never know. And then I see it. And I see people that were smiling. Oh, Mr. President, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And I think they're doing great. And then 20 minutes later, we'll be outside when that big plane pulls up and that door comes down. And they are walking the coffin with their boy inside this coffin with an American flag over the top. And they're walking that coffin down this ramp. And I've seen people that I thought were really incredible the way they were t I didn't even understood how they could take it so well. Scream like I've never seen anything before. Sometimes they'll run to the coffin. They'll break through military barriers. They'll run to the coffin and jump on top of the coffin, crying, mothers and wives crying desperately. Uh, and this is on these endless wars that just never stop. And there's a time and there's a place, but it's time to stop. And uh, just to finish, last Friday I went to Walter Reed and I gave out five Purple Hearts to incredible uh, young men, in this case, all men. And they took a beating. Beautiful people, they took a beating. One couldn't be there because the beating was so great that he was at a totally different part of the world. He lost a leg, he lost an arm. Ryan, he had tremendous damage beyond even what these young folks went through. But I'll tell you what, for me, it's very hard when I see that. It's very hard. It's easy to talk tough, you know, tough guys, all these tough guys. Let's keep fighting, let's keep fighting. If they had to go to Walter Reed, where they do unbelievable work, I have to tell you, these doctors are unbelievable. You know, it's easy to say, oh, they're not the, they're the best in the world. I've never seen anything like it. One young man last week had his nose rebuilt. And they said it was in a thousand pieces. And I said, so where were you hurt? He said, my face, sir, was almost obliterated. I said, you have a better face than I do. He said, sir, I had a doctor who was unbelievable. And they put it together. They said, he said a thousand fragments. Now, I don't know if that's even possible, but a thousand fragments. And they put it together. And his father, who was crying, came up to me and said, uh, you're not going to believe this, but my son didn't have a great looking nose, and now his nose is better. <laughs> okay, it's an amazing thing. But when you see these at the Purple Hearts, you see this kind of thing, and I see a lot of it at Walter Reed. And again, uh, the job uh, those doctors and the people do at Walter Reed, it's something to be commended. Thank you all very much. Thank you. to the 
these countries that are Muslim, that don't believe in Jesus Christ, that's been fighting. Let me tell you, when they finish fighting each other, they're going to fight you anyway. You know why? Because they consider you as being infidel. All right? Every Muslim does. So as Christians, we want to thank the Lord for protecting us. But they have the same right to accept Jesus as we do. You, oh, home. If you don't accept Jesus, I'm not going to worry about you because you have the same right that I have. If you don't want to make Jesus your Lord, I'm not going to worry about you. The Lord didn't tell me to worry about you, and I'm not. I'm just going to pray for you and keep ministering the word because you have the same right regardless of the color of your skin. You have the same right to receive Jesus Christ to be your Savior and then follow this word like he wants you to, as I do. If you choose not to, it's on you. If you choose not to, it's on you. Now, they all over this man, even Lindsey Graham. I'm going to send a letter to him too. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey, why don't you go over there? Oh, oh do you have a, a son or a daughter? Won't you get them to sign up? And wait a minute. No desk job. Uh-uh, no desk no desk job. That's how. No, 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 no. Not back in the line. No, you send them to the front of the line. Why? Because the mamas and daddies that's receiving their sons and daughters coming home in casters, a maim, left with all of their limb, coming, can't walk, can't talk, can't see people. Uh-uh. That ain't right. It never was right. It never was right. God, God ain't no, and everyone, I don't care who, what, if all these preachers stand up against him, they a bunch of liars. You know why? God will never do nothing like that. Show me in the Bible God ever did something like that. From, from Genesis to Revelation, whenever God sends people into battle, it's to win. It's not to go in there helpless and crippled and you get all beat up and beat down and you come home lame and lost. As long as they've been in Afghanistan, they still over there. Them folks still fight, and people still being killed. And then, I don't know, whoever that person was that made the comment like, who get killed over there? Where you from? Where you been? Did you just wake up? You been in a coma? It's like, man, I mean, that, you know, the Bible said, avoid foolish questions. That's a foolish question. Have no merit whatsoever. And that's why, again, all of you in here, how many of you fathers want your sons to go over there? Let me see your hand. Or your daughter, how many of you mothers want your daughter to go over there? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And every one of you ought to be on Facebook thanking the Lord for helping this president to do this. Every one of you ought to be on there saying, you know what, I thank the Lord for my president because he got some sense. He, he got some good sense, and I thank the Lord for bringing those folk home because they need to come home. They need to come home. Them folk over there, if they want to fight, let them. They're going to fight anyway. They're going to fight. And then the thing about it, everything that America built, they tear down. They go over there and spend our money building them buildings, and then two or three days later, a bomber. Somebody walk in there and blow themselves up in the building. <laughs> it's boy, suicide bomb. Folk, the devil is doing this. The only answer for that error is J-E-S-U-S. -S. It's Jesus. It's just J-E-S-U-S, -S, yes. I had another person, Catherine, says, I'm with Trump. Read the Bible. That's right. I can't believe that I had to remind Graham of this. Yeah, well, well I look like I ain't only one. That's right. That's right. I, you know what? That, that's foolish for a preacher to get up and say stuff like that. I don't care where it's Franklin. I don't care. All of them. If it's you, I don't give a who. It, it's just for what you do before you open your mouth, go sign up. Go sign up, and you can request to go over there. Tell them you don't even want to go through basic training. Tell them to give you one week, ship you out. Get Get on the fastest jet you get. Get you a parachute. <laughs> I mean, why waste time? Go through a hurry. Just go. All right? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, briefly go ahead. We're going we to go ahead. Go ahead. Let me hear you.
you what you got. See, this is why City Refuge Christian Center talked about so much. Because we ain't like a lot of these other churches. They come here and they lure you to sleep. I mean, we're going to be talking about it, so we might as well stand up for the truth. Go ahead. Where I work, I see a lot of what President Trump is talking about. I see a lot of mental issues, people com wanting to commit suicide, attempting to commit suicide. I see young men and girls, some of them the same age as what's in here, multiple limbs missing, traumatic mm. brain injuries, uh, vision loss, just I see those things. It's not just in Dover, Delaware, but go to places like where I work, you'll see firsthand. And that's, you know, it's amazing how these folks do that. Yes, go ahead. All right. Anyway, um, just showing you some of the things that um, people that don't have no idea, they just as selfish and self-centered. How you know? Because they won't go. You send your daughter. I want my neighbor to send their son and daughter, but I'm going to keep mine. Uh-uh. If you fud, you ought to be the first one to go. Matter of fact, your son and daughter ought not to You ought to go. Just go over there and just hang out with them. Jesus. Any questions? Or right, you can cut the lights back on, all right? It's amazing how those folks think. And tonight, we're going to talk about this. We're teaching from the standpoint, it don't make sense. It just... It just, this, it don't make sense, folks. It really don't. And you know what? The Lord gave me that before this. It don't make sense. The Lord, it don't, what we getting, it just don't make sense the way these folk think. It just don't. It don't. So we're going to find out why it don't make sense, all right? All right. Are you with me? Well, if you're not, we still going to find out, all right? All right. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 2. And see, let me tell you something. These folk, the reason why they don't want Christians to get involved in politics because Christians tell the truth. They tell it like it is. They will call you, a real Christian will call your hand out on it and say, show you what the Bible says about it, all right? That's why they want to keep you shut up, all right? Now, in the book of Psalms, now tonight, remember, what we teaching on now, it don't make sense. All right. In the book of Psalms 2, listen to what it says. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointing, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. Now, wait a minute. Okay. This scripture is telling us that the heathens, the king, the rulers of this world, and the people took counsel against God and against his anointed, talking about Christ, all right? Now, wait a minute here. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. It's saying what these people are doing, and they're still doing it today. And you might, hopefully not, but you might be one. All right, let's go back and let's look at what, what justifies the action of people that rage like this against God and against his Christ? All right? And if you rage against the word, you're in the same category. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27, it says this. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female, still male and female, created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So we see here that God created man. He created man and woman. That's all. No transgender, no, 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 no. He created a female and a male. And there's a difference. You don't look like no female. All right? And you don't look like no male. All right? He created a male and female. So I can deal with that. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You know, I, I, I don't have to accept nothing else 
because I know God created. I don't care what this government, I don't care what the governor of California say, I got more sense to know there's only a male and female. There should be two types of bathrooms, one for male, one for female. One for a male, M-A-L-E, or M-E-N, or female, F-E-M-A-L-E, or W-O-M-A-N, or N, however you want to put it. But there should be a difference. In other words, in men, it shouldn't be no W. All right? There should not be W when you spell men. All right? All right? You understand that? There should not be a W in there, involved in that. If you see a W on the door, and you a male, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place, all right? All right. So we see that God created male and female, all right? Now, okay. Now, remember, keep in mind, the leaders, the rulers of this world are angry, they, and they still hate God. What you mean they hate God? Look what they do to Christ. Now, all right? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now, the question is, what reason they have to hate Christ so much? They don't want you to mention his name. They don't want you to talk about him. All they want you to do is talk about God, God, God. And they don't want you to do that much now. But to Jesus, don't you open your mouth about Jesus. It's, it, you know, it's almost like he never came. To the world, they don't want to be reminded that Jesus came. Okay, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, all right, everybody got it? Let's start with verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of this tree. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of it. Now let me tell you, for those of you that don't believe in God and his Christ, and you don't believe this happened, I want you to go to the, the thickest wooded area there is and just walk through it and see where you come upon thorns and thistles. See, see how they real. See, see can you go into the deep breast and come out unscathed. See, just go through it. Just don't worry about putting on no protective clothes. Just, just find you the thickest bush you can and just run through it. Just go through Just, Just, you, you know, go through it. You know, be like, be like um, uh, whoever, lightning or whatever the guy's name, all right? Just go through it, all right? Okay, here we have a situation where God created man. And then man disobeyed God. And now God is talking about cursing man's life by cursing the ground. Wait a minute now. No longer will man have a good life. Now why? Because man was disobedient. So now man in a state where man needs help. All right? They need help. Now God is saying, I'm going to curse the ground, and then all the days of your life is going to be full of sorrow. That means no happiness, sorrow. Now wait a minute here. This is God actually coming back at his man because of his rebellion and also woman also, all right? Now, all right, let's move on. It's, let's go to uh, chapter, verse 22. Let's go to verse 22. It says this. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Now let us put forth his hand and take also, take also of the tree of life and Excuse me, let me read this again. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, here, because man have disobeyed God, God said, Now man knows good and evil. But the devil told Eve, that's what you're going to know. But wait a minute now. That's all you're going to know. You won't be able to deal with it. You're going to know. At one time, all you knew was good. Your mind was perfectly clear. You were good. No, no. It was just nothing but goodness. But now, you don't allow evil to infiltrate 
your mind. But the thing about it, you don't have power over the evil now. Now you got this wickedness inside of you that you got to deal with, and you don't have the ability to deal with it. So now you've been sentenced with evil. And that's why the scripture says this. The wages of sin is what? Now you're going to die. I created you to live forever, but now you're going to die. Why? Simply because you disobeyed me. And that thing, that sentence was placed on the whole human race because of what Adam did at the beginning. All right? Any question? So now the question is this. Why are people raising up against Christ? And some of you in here, why you don't like Jesus? Wait a minute. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now the human race is in a mess. It's in a real mess, all right? Now, let's go back to chapter 1 of Genesis, all right? We're going to give you every scripture so you can go home and study it for yourself. Now, back in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us this, verse 27, that God made man in his image and in his likeness. So that means man was godly. Not God less, but God least. Man was acting like God, all right? Acting just like God when God first created. When man disobeyed God, it changed. Let's go to Psalms chapter 1 right quick. Psalms 1. Now, why it just don't make no sense for folk to create Jesus, I mean to treat Jesus the way he's being treated. You know what, Jesus, let me tell y'all something. Jesus ought to be on every street corner, every city, every county, every, every state ought to have a sign saying, welcome to Jesus' country. Every, it ought to be, it ought, the schools ought to be flashing a light saying Jesus is in the public school. It should, Jesus should be everywhere. And I mean, you, you know what? Jesus, if you wake up at night, there should be a light somewhere saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> I know folk ain't going to like this, but that's okay. All right. Now, Genesis of Psalms 1. Let's look at something now. Okay. In the book of Psalms 1, it says this. Verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drive away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now wait a minute now. Okay. So now man has become ungodly because of what Adam did. So every one of us was godless. We wasn't God. And then the scripture tells us what's going to happen to us. It says, we're not going to be able to stand in judgment. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Now, now, wait a minute. Not only are we not going to be, we're going to perish. What perish mean to you? Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I want you to think about this. Not what God did, but because of what man did, Every one of us going to perish. So why should, wait a minute, so I'm helpless. I'm messed up. My little, whatever years I live, ain't going to be much. It's going to be over. And folk, do you know, this is October now. It's like we just left January again. And let me tell you, it won't be long. We'll be back here in October. So you can't, tell, you can't tell me time is slowing down. But you can tell me time is winding up. It's going down. But nevertheless, wait a minute. Okay, I'm perishing. I'm helpless. God said I'm perishing. Now, you, you can say anything about me. It won't, be, it won't happen. But God says the creature he created, the man and woman, is perishing. That means that's what it means. We ain't going to be here. Nobody
Nobody going to be talking. Ain't going to be nothing. We, we, uh, that means that our end is devastation. Our end is destruction. Our end is, no matter what we do, we can't save ourselves. No matter what, why? Because God said what was going to happen. Here he says this. He said, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. But then we weren't righteous. We were, we were perishing because of what he did, all right? Okay, now, now, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 2, all right? Okay, why did the heathen rage? Folks, it don't make sense. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. Lord Jesus, everybody, every, absolutely everybody that do not have Jesus Christ as their Savior going to die and go to H-E-L-L, all right? That's, that's where, that's where they're going, all right? Now, in the book of Matthew, okay, Matthew chapter 2. Let's see here. It says this, first one. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Now, hold your hand there. I want you to go back to Psalm. Let's go back to Psalm. Psalms 2. Now, remember now, Everybody was going to perish. Absolutely everybody. Everybody. Everybody, all right? In the book of Psalm 2, it says, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? So it's asking the question, Why is the ungodly so upset? Why are they so... Have anybody ever raged at you? Have, you, have anybody ever just... Okay, why did the heathen rage and the people, and then imagine the vain thing? Let's see. Let me see how I'm going I'm to I'm I'm chop them up. You know, they start thinking, creative ways how to make your life miserable or take away your life. Just imagine vain things, okay? The kings of the earth set themselves, wait a minute, the rulers decided to take a stand against God and his Christ. The rulers took counsel. They came together and decided we're going to stand against God and his Savior, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause. In other words, let's take away their unity. Bands and cause means they unify. They are one. They are two in one, agree in one. Let us destroy them. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. We already messed up. We we all, we all ain't got nobody to help us, folks. Okay, you can't help me. <laughs> now, you, all of you together can't help me. You cannot help me. And the thing about it, I can't help you except giving you Jesus. So, nobody can help nobody. Think about that for a minute. Nobody can help Nobody. Nobody can help nobody. So the whole human race is messed up. And think about it. The devil, because he's moving in the midst of the human race, is sending folk to hell. And before he sent them to hell, he's making their life miserable. I mean, the reason why, let me tell you the reason why. The reason why some of you sad in here right now ain't because of God, it's Christ. It's because of the devil. The devil, he will own you. The devil will own you and beat you for no reason. He will beat you just because he own you. He will make your life miserable just because he own you. He, he will make sure, listen to this now. I want you to think about it. He will make sure that you have a heart attack and he'll tell you to don't die because he don't want you to die yet because not only do he want you to have a heart attack, he wants you to get cancer. He want, to, he want you to have arthritis in your toes. He want your toenails to fall off. He want everything he can to 
happen to you. He wants everything he can before you leave. The devil, people, the devil really want to mess you up. The devil, wait a minute, he thinks about how to mess you up. He spent all this. Now you think about how you can get up the hill, and he think about how you can he can bury you. He's thinking about how can I mess up their lives? How can I keep them from doing anything good? How can I keep them from anything that's good? How can I do? So he thinks about it. And the thing about the devil, he try everything. So if you sitting there sad and busted now, it ain't because of the Lord. It's because some kind of way the devil got in your life. And you allowed him to control you, and then by controlling you, you implemented or worked out his plan. Jesus. I don't want you to learn nothing. I want you to be stupid all your life. Because let me tell you something. If you learn something, that's going to be a burden. But if you're stupid, you can cruise. If you just don't know nothing, then you won't worry about nothing. Why? Because you don't know nothing. The devil got all kinds of ways to deceive and mess you up. You know what? You know something. Now, you done got a job, and now you fired off your job. But you ain't got no job. The Lord ain't told you to do that. The Lord... The Lord, the reason why you ain't got now, because the Lord wasn't working in your plan. And let me tell you, those of you, listen, to, those of you that are sitting there right now, that's in sadness and agony and don't want to hear this, the devil don't want you to hear this either. Why? People, you think the devil want me telling you about him? He don't want me. If he could stop me, he would. But he don't control me. The devil don't want me to tell you about his plan for your life. The devil just don't want that one. Only thing the devil wants you to do is take you up on a mountain or a pinnacle and lie to you. And then get you up there and say, I want you to drop off. I want you to drop off. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. When you hit the ground, you got $10 million. That's better than the lottery. question is this. When you hit the ground, would you, would you, <laughs> what you going to do with it? <laughs> you don't hit the ground. You barely alive. Hey, you got $10 million, but you can't move. Every bone in your body is broke. You messed up. You laying there. People, that's the devil. His job is to mess you up. And you will spend your time, some of you right now, you daydreaming, I don't want to be here. But then you don't know where you're at. I wish I wasn't here. Why are we talking about this? Don't even understand this. And your life messed up. Your life me That's what the devil does. And that's why Jesus said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. All right? Any question before we move on? Now, wait a minute now. What? It don't make sense. All right? Now, let's move on. All right, verse 11 says this. It says, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, wait a minute. God just anointed a child. God, he came into the world, and the, and the, loot, the leaders are having a fit of over a child being born. A lead, the, the people still have it. God said in verse 12, And being warned of God in a dream, and they, that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country. Now listen to this now. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was marked of the wise man, was exceedingly wrong and sent forth and slew all the children that was in Bethlehem in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. Now when Herod asked the 
wise man to go find out where Jesus was. Now the king asked the wise man, I want you to find out this, where the Savior's at. Then come back and let me know. They didn't go back because God warned them. But what he did, he went back and killed every child all the way back to the day that he asked, that he asked the wise man to go check on. Them. So from two years old and under, every child died, folks. Every he now wait a minute. This man, this man was so full of rage, a king. Why did the heathen rage? And why did the king took counsel against not just him now? You're gonna find others. This man, because of so much rage, he had innocent children slaughtered because of Jesus being born. Because he couldn't find Jesus. Now, folk, wait a minute. Now, Herod was just as wicked as everybody else. He needed a savior too. Why are you going to try to kill the person that's going to help you? It don't make sense. It do not make sense when you know that you're going to hell. But then somebody came along that can help you stay away from hell. But you don't want that. I, I want to do what I want to do. I want to do my thing. I want If you want to do your thing, you go down the pyramid and get the eyes of the brother record. It's my thing. I want to do what I want to go. And then you play that until you leave here. Until you leave this earth. Peep, it's amazing how Adam messed up the human race. Jesus came to deliver the human race. And folk don't want him. You have to, people, people, look, folk, look at this country here. Look at some of you. I don't think Jesus should be in this. But well, wait a minute. If Jesus shouldn't be in this, what you in? What are you doing? Wait a minute. Look at the res disrespect, the rebellion that this nation, not only this nation, but have when it comes to Jesus Christ. You, folk, you got, that, as we said earlier, if this nation was in the right place, we have signs all over the place talking about Jesus. You have signs at your house saying Jesus is Lord. If you understood the power and the authority of what, if you saved, if you understood what he delivered you from, but then maybe you're not delivered. Maybe, if you understood what this man did for the human race, that the human race do not want to honor him. It says, it says, verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, because of the anger, back up in verse 12, God knew what was going to happen. So he told the wise men, don't you go back to Herod. Herod do not want to worship Jesus. Herod has no intentions, like some of you, of worshiping Jesus. But I want you to look at the kind of spirit Herod had. Herod had a devil in him. That's why he did not want to worship Jesus. But look at the wise men. They even worship him as a child. They worship Jesus. It's okay to worship Jesus. It's, it's, it's the right thing to do to worship Jesus. For those of you that, I don't know whether I should worship Jesus or not, you just found out. You ought to worship him with everything you got. And let me say this to you. There shouldn't be not one of you in here resist when the Holy Spirit leads you to worship our king, unless you're not saved. And Jesus is my king. Now, you can say whatever you want to say. Jesus is my king. And I thank God that I don't have to go to hell Called Jesus is my king. And you ain't going to stop me from talking about Jesus Christ. You're not going to talk. I'm, you're not going to deceive me at all. I'm going to talk more about Jesus even now. More now. Why? Because I found out that I can talk about him. Every time I open my Bible, I find out I have the right to talk about Jesus. Any question, we move on. I'm not afraid or intimidated. All right? Now, let's move on. Now, Herod, in verse 16, look at his reaction. He saw that he was mocked of the wise man, was exceeding raw, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast there from two years old and under, according to the time.
time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now, I want you to hold your hand there and go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter. Let's go to Jeremiah for a few minutes, chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. It is a blessing to be saved. It is a blessing to be saved, folks. Jeremiah 31. Listen to this now. Verse 15 says, Thus says the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, Lamentation, and bitterness. See, that's what Trump, President Trump was talking about. Bitterness, weeping. Raphael, weeping for her children. Refusing to be comfort for her children because they were not. Now, wait a minute. God told a prophet named Jeremiah hundreds of years before it really happened, what was going to happen. It was prophesied back in Jeremiah's day that Israel, that mother, were going to be lamentating. When I said lamentating, like he had described, President had described, you standing at the airport and you trying to be strong. But your child is dead. And you standing there waiting for them to bring your child off the plane. And your child come off the plane. And all of a sudden, you lose it. Because it's your child. You lose everything. Because now your child dead. That means your child ain't coming back home anymore. Your child, you're not going to hear your child's voice anymore. Or you're not going to hear your husband or wife voice anymore. They gone. They gone. You're not going to be able to call them on the phone and see how they doing. They gone now. And you standing there. They standing there. And they bringing that casket off the plane. And all of a sudden, you forget about everything and everybody. You don't care about security. You're going, you're going to get to your child. And you, do you, can you see that? And they fall on that caster, and nothing or nobody can soothe them. Because between them and their child is death. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. Because a king did not want Jesus to be born. That's what happened because leaders, even today, still don't want you to talk about Jesus. Now, the question to you, I don't know of one nation on the earth, I don't know of one nation on earth where a leader stand up publicly and say, Jesus Lord. Have you? Have you heard of any? I haven't. To this day, I haven't heard of any. I haven't heard a one, because see, God ain't saving you. You ain't going to get grace through God. You're going to get it through Jesus Christ. So wait a minute. If you're saved, if you truly say like you say you are, and not a hypocrite, and you truly understand that I don't have to go to hell, I don't have to perish, because of one man, I ought to spend the rest of my life glorifying that man. If I'm saved, if I'm really saved, but if I'm a hypocrite or a liar, I use it to my advantage. Because I don't understand what I've been delivered, the, the opportunity that I have. So what I do, I take it lightly. So I use Jesus as a puppet. Because I really don't believe in him enough to stand up and tell everybody 
It's Jesus. It's just Jesus. Why? Because I'm ashamed of him and I don't want to be talked about. Or I'm afraid. They might not like it. Herod didn't like it. But did that stop God? Listen, listen, listen. Now. listen this is amazing what's happening. Even in this country as we speak. Even in this country as we speak. Now I want, I want you to go to St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. It's amazing how, wait a minute, and the thing about it, the Bible tells me that Jesus is supposed to be the head of the church. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not God the Father, but Jesus the Christ. He's supposed to be the head. Wait a minute. Wait. Jesus is the manager. He's the CEO. If you want any change done, if you can get to the CEO, you got a greater chance than going to a supervisor or a foreman. Jesus. Now listen to this now. Listen to this. In the book of St. John, chapter 1, I want you to look at verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came. Now let me tell you something. You know what's not going to get you to heaven, like I told y'all today, mercy. Mercy ain't going to get you to heaven. Mercy will not get you. Why? Mercy is not qualified to get you to heaven. And God is having mercy every day on all of us, even the wicked. He's having, if the wicked is still living today, it, those of you that's not saved, it's because the Lord having mercy on you. The Lord having mercy on you. He having mercy. But mercy is not going to get you to heaven. Only grace going to get you to heaven. So if you don't receive this grace, you ain't going to heaven. Let me say it again. If you don't receive grace, and grace only comes from not God the Father, God sent him, but Jesus has the authority to give out grace. So, you, let, me say, let me say, like I told um, these folk today, some of you pray that your unsaved family members have a good life, have a blessed life, have all their needs met. I don't do that. You know why? I pray that they get saved. Because you know why? Let me tell you why. Because, see, my Bible tells me you can have all the riches in the world. Your life don't consist of the things you got. Rich, rich men ain't going to heaven because they rich, nor women. Mind you, wait a minute. The Bible says the goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm praying for say, unsaved folk to get saved. The re Let me tell you something. It's those of you that think that your unsaved members of being blessed because you praying that the Lord bless them with food and clothes and shelter? He ain't. You know why they getting food, clothes, and shelter? Thank you. His mercy. Whether you pray or not, God going to have mercy on them. So it ain't your prayer. God want us to pray that they get delivered. Jesus says something very peculiar in St. John 17. He said, I ain't praying for the world. He's he said, absolutely, I pray not for the world. I'm praying for Christians. The word, I sent the word for the world. So if you're in the world, you need to get saved so you can come out of the world. And nobody going to heaven without Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one that's carrying grace. The only one. The only one that's carrying grace. So wait a minute. It don't make no sense. For people to be ashamed or afraid or don't want to talk about Jesus out there when he's the only one that can get you to heaven. It, it's stupid. It don't make, it's, it's like, man, what's wrong with these folks? They bound by the devil. They bound, God, Paul said it this way, they bound by the spirit of the world. That's that old religious spirit. They bound by the spirit of the world. Why? Because the spirit of the world act religious. They, 
The spirit of the world will do something, but what it won't do is do it from the heart. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 15, he said, you know what? They honor me with their mouth, but their lips are far from me. Listen to this now. It says plainly in, in St. John chapter 1, verse 16, and his fullness, we're going to read verse 16, have all we received grace for it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go back a little bit. Verse 15. John bared witness of him. Wait a minute. John even talked about. John talked about Jesus. John, John, John was not in the synagogue talking about it. John was in the wilderness, in the street, talking about it. When the Pharisees came, John was preaching Jesus. There's somebody coming more mighty than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and loosen. He told them Pharisees, the religious preachers, he said, you know what? Who told you vipers? Who told you devils? Who told you devils to come here? Then he said, you know what you need to do? Bring forth fruits of repentance. Oh, Jesus. Lord, Jesus. listen to this. It says, and of his fullness have all we received, grace for grace. People, is Jesus, you ain't going to heaven without Jesus. I don't care who you are. If you, were, if you go to heaven without Jesus, Abraham would have went. Moses would have went. Well, I know my mom is in heaven. Well, wait a minute. I know my dad is in heaven. Well, how do you know? Have you ever been to heaven? Do you know where heaven is? Do you know it's heaven in the north, south, east, or west? We know the third, the devil said, I'm going to exalt my throne above God in the north. But God, oh, God is everywhere. Jesus, I know they in heaven. How you know? Have you ever been there? I, you know what? I don't never ask people for direction that never been to the place. If I ask you, do you know where... Um, Cincinnati, Ohio is. And you say, I've never been there. I said, thank you. <laughs> I'll see you later. No, I've never been there. No, you can't tell me nothing. Why? Cause, so if I don't get information from Cincinnati, Ohio, you think I'm going to listen to you tell me where heaven is? And who's up there? you got to be, and you really are. All right, let's move on. Listen, he said, and of his fullness have all we received, grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus. By who? Jesus. By who? Jesus grace and truth came by Jesus. Let me tell you something. When, a, when you really get saved, when a person really gets saved, you come out of your religious facade and you forget people. You start being dignified. And then you start being sanctified. So you can glorify and lift him high. That's what you do. You don't care about what these folks say. I don't care about what, what some of you look in here. I don't care. It don't bother me at all. Why? Because I'm telling you about Jesus. Jesus the Christ, boy, I tell you what. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus the Christ. Jesus is doing, so wait a minute, why did the heathen rage? Why did the people imagine a vain thing? Why did the leaders got upset about Jesus? Now I want you to go to, um, let's go back to Matthew again, chapter 3. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. Listen to this now. The question was asked, why does, it just don't make no sense. It really don't make no sense what's going on in this country more or less around the world, there should be Jesus. Jesus should be on people. There should not be one counter that you go in where Jesus is not the author of it. There should be a sign saying Jesus is the Lord of this county. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the people. You know what the NBA, listen to this, all you, LeBron James and Steph Curry and all this kind of mess, China got y'all messed up. Y'all too scared of China. You know, yeah, you, it's amazing how these folk are messed up. They mess, they bound by the devil. People, you can't shoot basketball and get to heaven. Basketball ain't going to get you to heaven, not football. 
not baseball. The only way we are going to heaven is by Jesus the Christ. Woo, Lord Jesus. If you don't like that, that ain't my problem. Thank God. That used to be my problem, but I got delivered. I'm saved. I'm saved now, all right? Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, it says this. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said to an old generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Now, this is John the Baptist talking to preachers. Oh, you generation of vipers, who have warned you to come here? And then he said, bring forth fruits of what? See, when you get saved, you can't stay the same. That's when you're really saved. When you're really, 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 really genuine, 100% saved. All right? That's what, now this is John now, the man in the wilderness, man in, in, in sackcloth and eating honey and locusts, uh, large hopper grass. Jeez, listen to this. You know people thought he was crazy, but he wasn't. He was not. Now, I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 3 again. Now, listen to this. Now, remember now, why, why the people were so raging? Why was people so angry about Jesus? Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 again. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to no good, and evil, and now let us put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat. Unless, excuse me, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him from the garden of Eden. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The liver said, God, don't do that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Okay. Adam to disobey God and the tree of life in the garden. Adam had permission to go any way he wanted in the garden. But because he disobeyed God, God said, hold up. Hold up. No, no, no. What I promised you yesterday, you ain't got it today. Well, God don't take it what he sure did. He took that tree took the opportunity away. And the thing about it, listen to this though. God left the tree in the garden. Because <laughs> see, what God created wasn't messed up. The garden of Eden was perfect, y'all. God said, let me get this rascal out of here. He done messed up. God said, you know what? If I leave him there, he's going to do it again. <laughs> if I leave, well, you know what? He ought to give him another chance. God said, oh, no. <laughs> he'll head fuck straight for that tree, and then he has the ability to live forever under his condition. People, you know what? It's a good thing on our behalf that Adam is not here. You know what I mean? <laughs> For Adam's sake, it's a good thing. Because if Adam was still here, <laughs> you can sit there with your religious, your religious facade all you want. All you want. You can act religious all you want. But if Adam was still here on the earth today, after what he did, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Listen to this. It says, so he drove out the man, and he placed. Now, listen to this now. 
The scripture says he drove him. He didn't leave him out. Adam did not want to leave. How many of you ever watched gun smoke? Or any kind of western where they had cattle. And they had the cowboys and the cattle want to go one way. Ha! 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 Get it up here. Okay, for you intelligent folks, Adam did not want to go on his own. Adam did not say, I'll go. <laughs> Adam was reluctant to go. So God drove him out. You know, it reminded me of Jesus driving Oh, Jesus, the merchandise, the merchants out of the temple. It's amazing. It's amazing, folks. It's just amazing. Now, wait a minute here. Now, I want you to go to Psalms 9. Let's go to Psalms 9. It's amazing how this country react towards Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Mm. I know somebody's alive. In the book of Psalms 9, beginning at verse 15, it says, The heathen are sunk down into the pit that, that they made. Now listen to this. Okay, okay. Well, this All of you that's not saved, not saved and said right now, this is just show you why you said. You sunk down because of the pit. The circumstances that you made, the charge you, you. Listen to this, listen. It says, <laughs> the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid is their own. I ain't smiling. I don't want to be here. I don't like this. And that's why you. That's why you. Right there. That's why joy is far from you. <laughs> if you could take the shuttle and go to the moon, you won't find it. Joy is saying to you, I don't know part of that. Joy will be saying, I'm having a good time. So why should I hang with you? Listen, listen. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they have made. You know, you wake up in the morning, you're sad and depressed. You just, look at what you did. The reason why you're sad and depressed, because you're in your own pit. I ain't in my own pit. I am not in my own pit. I'm in somebody else's pit. <laughs> the reason why you don't have that joy and that peace and that woo diligence and that fervency when it comes to the Lord is because you're in your own pit. And how did you get in your in own pit? As a person, man think is in his The reason why you can't have that joy and that understanding of Jesus and what he did is because you in your own 
Your thinking got you messed up. Your thinking got you in a place where you don't, you can't see the magnitude of what Jesus really did when he brought grace to the human race. You don't see the value of it, so it don't spark you. You like that firecracker with no tip. <laughs> There's no explosion in you. <laughs> there, there, there's no life in you. There's no joy in you and no peace. You know why? Because you really don't understand what he did. You really don't. I, you know what? If the Lord allow, I'll make some examples out of you right now. Because some of you, y'all messed up. I'll tell the body, look at that. Look at that. Look at her. Look at him. You know why they like that? Because they in their pit. <laughs> they in their old pit. They think somebody else put them in the pit, but it's their own pit. It's their own pit. It's their own thinking. The reason why you like that because of you, your thinking. Your, it's because of your thinking. If your shoes hurt your feet, I didn't tell you to put them on. <laughs> you walk around with your shoes hurting your feet, I had nothing to do with it. They're your feet as well as your shoes. If you ain't got sense enough to take them off, you are hungry. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah, pray. Thank God for shoes. The right side. It's your own self. You sit there with your judgmental mind. You're sad, depressed, tired, busted, and broke. And you still, I don't want to be like them. And they full of joy. Full of having a good time. And you sitting there. Getting old. <laughs> I didn't say becoming old. Everybody gonna be coming old, but you get it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be old. I'm a, I'm aware of my body. You know what you can do? There are cars. Okay, there are cars you can buy. Let's say you get a, a, a 2020 vehicle. All right. Now, let's go back. This is a 2018 vehicle. You get the car, and you put 150,000 miles on it in two years. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's rough. That's rough. That's rough. That, that, that's, that's. In two years, 150,000 miles. Now, let me tell you something. If you decide, I'm going to buy that car, and that car is a 2018, but it has 150,000 miles on it, all right? But you want that car because it looks good, but you don't know the mechanical condition of it. So you buy that car, I got a good deal. <laughs> and when you get home, <laughs> That car never leave your yard. <laughs> you wake up the next day, and you really found out that you know what? You crank it up. It didn't sound like that yesterday. It sounded smooth. Because <laughs> somebody, somebody done put night weight oil in it. <laughs> you don't hear the valves tapping yesterday. You didn't see no smoke yesterday, but the day you look crooked it up, <laughs> it is like you spray for mosquitoes. <laughs> Your neighbor said, I didn't know you could do that <laughs> when you come over to my house. Some of you look like you've been spraying for mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Lord 
Jesus. Whoa! <laughs> and you said, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I'm just smoking. <laughs> well, oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Man, Jesus. No joy, no peace, no confidence or nothing. You wake up in the morning just as dead as ever. You go on your job, dead as ever. Dead as ever. No life or nothing. Just existing. Just like that car. Got too many miles on it. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, Psalms 9. Verse 17 says this. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Wait a minute here. The wicked shall be turned into hell. This is telling me again that all the wicked, meaning this, it's not talking about just all the murders, liars, rapers, or whatever. It's saying all the wicked. That means every human being man, woman, boy, and girl, that do not have a relationship with Jesus, going to hell. They are going to H-E-L-L. -L. And then if you don't believe this, he said all the nation. All, all, your nations too. China, Japan, India, Germany, Britain, Australia, all of them. United States, all of them that forget God going to hell. Now, when you say, well, it said forget God. Right. It said forget God. But let me show you what God said. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Mark. Right quick, like. We're going to stop at Mark and get some spiritual gas. So we can go to Hebrews. But we're going to go to Mark first. Lord Jesus. In the book of Mark, chapter 9. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S, Jesus the Christ. Mark, chapter 9. It says this. Everybody got it? Verse 7. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Whoa! So God wants me to listen to Jesus. Woo! Jesus. For some reason, God said, I want you to pay attention to But I don't like Jesus. Why? Because the Muslims don't like the Hindus don't like him. The five percenters don't like him. I don't like Jesus because the unsaved do not like Jesus. I don't like Jesus because the going to church folk don't like Jesus. So I don't like him. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute. God said, I want you to listen to my son Jesus. Now I want you to go to Hebrews. For those of you that are still not convinced yet, because you're that 2018 vehicle with the 150,000 miles, <laughs> if that car could talk, <laughs> that car would say, nah, you know, you ain't got no business abusing me like this. Change the oil twice. Every time you stop at a stop sign, you squeak. <laughs> oh, that's music playing. <laughs> For some reason, whenever you play, get ready to stop music playing. <laughs> man. It's like, man. <laughs> Lord Jesus. You know. Lord 
at Hebrews chapter 1. It's a blessing to be saved, folks. And to know who your Savior is and not be ashamed of it. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1, it says, God who has sun-dry times and in diverse manners, in time past, You know, I, I heard the Holy Spirit and some folk are like a Cadillac converter. A Cadillac converter is on a vehicle. And whenever the converter gets stopped up, <laughs> you got the same car with the same gas in it, got the same power. But when you start going up here, you stopped up. Some of you stopped up. <laughs> Some of you just, and when you stopped up, when you stopped up, you can't, you can't, you cannot express yourself. <laughs> you bash it again. You bash it again, but you ain't going to wait. <laughs> and the folk behind you said, won't you get <laughs> and you you got it to the flow. <laughs> I mean you got all the even your power. You Why? 
because God got rid of death too. And then it says this. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the... Okay, so that means all the wicked were cast into the lake of fire. So if the wicked, and they were cast into the lake of fire, and death and hell was cast first, that means the wicked got to live forever too. In the lake of, because he got rid of death before he got rid of the wicked. <laughs> so now the wicked is going to live forever in the lake of fire. So all of you unbelievers are going to live, if you die in that condition, you're going to spend eternity. You cannot die because there's no death. You cannot go to hell because there's no hell anymore. It's just a lake of fire. All you unbelievers that don't believe that, you're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. So this is telling me here, and whosoever was not found written in the Lamb in the book of life was cast into the lake uh, well, now, one more scripture before we close tonight. Well, if the Lord said, go to Psalm. Psalm 16. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody got it? Let's start with verse 5. All right. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup by maintaining my lot. Lot. Okay, the psalmist is saying that the Lord is a part of my destiny. What I'm going to inherit or who I'm going to inherit. But not only is he a part of my future, but he's maintaining my now. Maintaining means right now. He's maintaining my lot. He's maintaining my property. He's, the Bible said, in your patience, possess your soul. So right now as a Christian, I'm not waiting to talk about the Lord in the future. I'm not waiting to talk about my inheritance in, when I get it. I'm talking about my inheritor now. Because he's worth talking about right now. Because he's maintaining, he's keeping me. The reason why I'm talking about Jesus, because he's keeping me so I can talk about him. So that's the reason why I talk about Jesus. Because he's keeping me. Then he says, the lines are falling unto me in a pleasant place. I mean this. Everything is working out for me. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, go ahead, Lou. Thank you, Jesus. Everything, no matter whether you like it or don't like everything, it, it is, it's not based on whether you like me or not. Everything is just working out for me. Everything is just working out for me. It's just working out for me. You can sit there with your ill-begotten thoughts, but everything is just working out for me. It's just working out for me. I mean, it, the Lord is making sure everything is just, it's just working out. So I can't help but smile because it's working out. Matter of fact, because everything is working out, I'm working out. <laughs> I'm working out. I'm not sitting there. 
wondering what's going on. Everything is being worked out. Oh, Jesus. He says, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly, I got a godly inheritance. I will, because of that, I will bless the Lord who has given me. He, he done told me what I can do. My reins also instruct me in the night sea. Meaning, even my heart, my spirit, reigns in spirit. My spirit is thinking about the Lord at night. Not just when I'm around you. When I'm home by myself, my spirit is, is constant thinking about Jesus. I'm thinking about how good, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you. Lord, you know what? I just thank you. I'm thanking you for thanking you. I'm just thanking you, Jesus. I'm, I am thanking you, Jesus. Why? Because you, Jesus. Ooh. Then he says this. I have set the Lord always before me. Wait a minute. I made, I purposely said that I'm going to talk about the Lord everywhere I go. I purposely determined that I'm going to set the Lord, make sure the Lord is in the conversation of my spirit so it can flow out of my lips. I've said it. I, I, have, I have set the Lord always. I want you to come up here. Come up here and sit right here, okay? You need, you need deliverance too. You, you need to be delivered. I've said, there's a few more of you who need to be delivered too. You need, you need salvation. You need to be saved. There's some of you grown for you need to be saved. You ain't saved. You're not saved. Don't get mad at me, but you ain't saved. You're religious, but you ain't saved. All right? Listen to this. I, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I cannot be moved. Wait a minute. He's saying, wait a minute here. How do you know the Lord is at your right hand? You always thinking about him all throughout the day. And some of you, you ain't thinking about him like that because he ain't your right hand. He's not your right hand. And let me say this to you. If he ain't right your right hand, he sure ain't your left. Because the Lord ain't going to be where you want him to be. He's going to be where he's supposed to be. He ain't going to be your tail. He's going to be your head or he ain't going to be with you. So you can sit there with your religious pride and whatever you want, but you're going to hell. You will definitely go to hell if your attitude, if you don't get saved. I'm just telling you. I'm just throwing this out there if you don't get saved. All right? Just letting you know you don't get saved because the Lord see your religiosity. He see it, and I do too. Listen to this, though. He says this. He says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart, see, when he's your right hand, <laughs> you don't have to pretend. You just feel good on the inside. And what I like about it, when you feel good on the inside, people that On the outside, sure, they don't feel good. It don't bother you inside. It, it's, there's a power that comes with salvation, with the word. And that power comes with power. Where you can look at folk and you can see the desperation on their face, the brokenness, the I wish I could be like that. I wish I could think like that. And you know what you do? You keep your joy. It don't affect you. I, I wish I can really have that on the inside. Because, see, those of you that don't have it on the inside, you know it, and he knew it. And every now and then, he allows me to know it so I can try to encourage you to stop pretending. Get yourself right. Stop 
lying to yourself because all liars going to have their part in it. And then the lake of fire is going to be taken from you. The lake of fire is going to be the place you place yourself in. You know why? Because you refuse the real fire. Because, see, not only does Jesus baptize in the Holy Ghost, but there's a fire that comes with it that clean up your spirit. It, it purges you. Well, all of a sudden on the inside, you just feel good. You're clean. You're saying, Lord, I'm honest on the inside. I, I feel good on the inside. I don't care about the outside. I'm feeling good on the inside. Oh, Jesus. Listen. Okay, it says this. It says, Therefore my heart is glad, my glory rejoiced, my flesh also shall rest. Okay, okay. Some of you, right now you're tense. <laughs> Your flesh is messed up. You, you, you're in a tense moment here. You know, it's not resting in hope. You, you, you know, uh, relief is not near you. <laughs> you when you tense, when, when a person is tense, it's something that your flesh can feel. You know, sometimes you be wondering, is that me? Is that not me? I wonder what is known and what's not known. All kind of things go through, you know. You know, one thing, you know, stuff, I'm going to say something to you. One thing about a guilty person, a guilty person, listen to this. When you ask if someone is guilty of something, it's hard for them to, it's hard for them to look you in the eye. It's, 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 it, it affects their flesh. You know I didn't mean to do that. You know I didn't mean it. It's, it's, it. Your flesh, your flesh reacts, and you don't even know it. You'll be telling on yourself and don't even know it. You, it's kind of like, you remember your children when they say, I didn't do that. <laughs> you ain't no different. <laughs> Listen to it. It says this. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. So I'm rejoicing. And my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. David said, wait a minute, the reason why I'm full of joy and peace because of the Holy One. And God ain't going to leave me in hell because of the Holy One. Because my hope and my trust is in Jesus. So I got a right to express who's inside of me. And that's Jesus. And since Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. And he brought grace. And because of grace, I am saved through faith and not of myself. I have a right to live by his standard. And his standard is this, that I should glorify him, that I should bless him at all. If I'm sitting down, I should bless him. If I'm standing up, I should bless him. If I'm asleep, I ought to sleep sound so I can bless him. I ought to praise the Lord at all times. And then I'm not ashamed of him. I am. And then one more thing. Go to, go to Matthew chapter 16. This is okay. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 16, all right. Lord Jesus. I am. It's a blessing to be blessed by the greatest by Jesus the Christ. And to all, now 
Now this should set some of you free. To all of my enemies, far and near, close up and fall. To all of my enemies, every one of them, I have to say this. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say also unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. There's no amount no amount, absolutely. There's no group large. There's not enough human beings on the earth to stop a Christian. So if you won 10 or 20, you're the minority. There's not enough human beings on earth to stop a real Christian. Because the gates of hell is not prevail, cannot. It'll rise up, but it absolutely cannot steal the destiny of a Christian. Joy, peace, and righteousness. You know, I like to look in your eyes sometimes. Yeah. I ain't said demons in your eyes now. You know, some folks think demons. <laughs> Some of y'all got shipped down. <laughs> it's just something about the eye contact, you know. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how your flesh can mess you up. Folks, a Christian should never be afraid of one or ten million wicked because they cannot prevail against a Christian. The gates of hell will not prevail, not against a building, but the church. But the church. It can't. It's impossible. That's what Jesus said. The Savior. So every one of you that are saved ought to be encouraged. Every one of you that are saved ought to believe Jesus. And stand up and glorify Jesus. And you can't glorify him with your mouth shut. But what about those that can't talk? They do sign language. One thing about your heart, your spirit, your spirit can talk. Your spirit can talk. Any question tonight about why? Any questions before we close tonight? It don't make sense. The way folk act in these day, last days and call themselves Christian. Let the Bible call you a Christian by bringing forth the fruits of the word. That's the best way to live. Go ahead. Apostle, my question is, okay, we pray that we have judges in place to do the right thing. So is that why they raging against a judge that had a Bible? And then they're mad because the person said she shouldn't be telling people how to get to Jesus Christ. That's, I guarantee you, most of them go to church. But that's what we're talking about here. But then they're not the only one. Look around. We got them in here. Look at yourself. What you do? You claim to be saved? What you do? Where your fruit's at? What you do? Just look at 
at yourself. Just take a good look at yourself and wonder, why am I not alive? Why? Why I don't have this desire to glorify my Jesus? Oh, he saved me. He saved me from hell. Oh, no. I want you to know he delivered me. Why should I be in this old religious facade like it's just another thing? See, when you're not saved, you don't have the joy of the salvation. You're not free. You're still bound. That's what's happening. When a person is really saved, really born again, read the book of Acts. That talks about real Christians. It's those hypocrites in there too. But you see, get a chance to see some real Christians. Some real Christians. Where Jesus lit up, for some reason, he lit up their spirit. They became alive on the inside. And the inside is more powerful than the outside. It's, uh, it's every place, every place in this country ought to be in a place where they glorify Jesus. Every place. Jesus is the only one that saves. He's the only one that's worth anybody's worship and praise. Him and God the Father. That's it. So I don't care whether, I don't need the wicked to tell me when I can talk about Jesus. Some of you do, but I don't. I don't need the wicked to tell me when I can talk about Jesus and when I can't. I'm not bound by the wicked. The wicked don't control me. The wicked can't stop me, like some of you. And I thank the Lord for that freedom. Oh, I thank you. Let me say this to you. When I worked at SRS, they couldn't do it. They couldn't stop me. I'm safe. They couldn't stop me. And when they tried to stop me, there was a, uh, uh uh-uh. In your face, you ain't doing this. You devil, I rebuke. I rebuke so many people. That might be why they got them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No, you ain't going to do that no more. I'm not bound anymore. I thank the Lord for Jesus. But the question is this. Why are people so upset, so afraid, so hateful when it comes to Jesus? And he's the only one that can deliver. It don't make sense. It don't make no sense. I know you can say, but I don't want you. But I don't want you right now. I'm too young. I'm old and set in my ways. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you go to hell, you go to hell. <laughs> hey, don't sit in hell. All right, let me sit there. There are no sitting in hell. I guarantee them folk in hell right now, they ain't partying, they ain't communicating to each other, uh, not the right way. <laughs> and they're not sitting. I guarantee you that. They're not sitting. They're in pain and agony. They just what the Lord said. And that's why David said, for some reason, David said, you know what? If I make my bed in hell, God is there. Sometimes I wonder, did he get a glimpse of hell? Because he said in Psalm 16, I thank God that my soul will be. <laughs> so, so I thank you, Jesus. And let me say for all of you all, Jesus, I thank you that you will not leave my soul in hell. Oh, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. You will not leave my soul in hell. Jesus. Oh, God. Any question before we close tonight? Any deliverance needed? Joy and peace. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you, Lord, for life. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. The only person is Jesus. That's it. The only one. The only one. Some of you, you go, you go around people and you pick up their spirit. That's why you come in with that old heaviness. You know, that old, I get this old, no joy or peace. Let me tell you, folk used to, folk used to come together and stay together for hours. Praise the Lord. But they were saved. They were saved. They were really saved.
come in here, and let me tell you something. You folk, you let your flesh guide you where you can't get. Whew. No joy and peace. Just thinking about Jesus saved. Jesus saved is enough to stir up a Christian, to bring a Christian out of that old nonchalant, that old fleshly attitude, oh, it's just Jesus, just another name. Nah. Mm -mm. Not my Jesus. Maybe to you, but not to me. And then joy begin to rise up from your spirit. It's like, Lord Jesus. Jesus. He worked my attention. He is. Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. It's a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it's a blessing to be saved. And it's a blessing to stand for all of you and tell you Jesus still saved. Every one of you, Jesus actually still saved. And when you get saved, not only will you know it, but those around you, they're going to know it too. They're going to know it too. It works that way. Any questions before we close? I'm not concerned about time. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm having, okay, at my job, because of my role, I'm being I'm being um, with the holidays coming up. My role has it where I have to plan, for instance, there's a, a Coca-Cola display that I have to build that um, is around December. So Coca-Cola is red in white boxes. So basically, they've already come to me. I have to build a, a display where the Coke 12 packs are built into a a chair for Santa Claus. Okay. Um, so I'm having to do that kind of stuff. We also have an event called Moonlight Madness. It's for, it's on October 31st, so it's for Halloween. Right. Oh, what now? It's called Moonlight Madness. Okay. It's on October 31st. It's for Halloween. So because of my role with Kroger, I'm also having to do um, plan events and things for that. Kind of events. Like on Moonlight Madness is one day, and the kids come in. Um, they have candy at the different de departments that the departments hand out. They have um, like coloring contests, um, costume uh, costume contests, stuff like that. And I'm the one that has to do it because of my job. I have a problem with that. Um, but it is part of my job. So as I'm planning these things, I'm making it known, like for the Christmas thing, um, when they told me that that was going to be something that I had to do, I made it clear why well, I don't, you know, I don't believe in that. But since Kroger is telling me that this is a part of my job, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to make it clear that I don't, I don't believe in that. You're a Christian, aren't you? I absolutely am, which is why I don't believe in that pagan holiday. So am I wrong for being boisterous about my belief? Because they know I'm Christian. And I don't want to. I'm having a pasta. I need help. Because <laughs> like it's almost like I'm, I don't want to say I'm uncomfortable. Maybe that's a good way to put it. But I make it clear, OK, I don't believe in any of this. I'm doing this because of Kroger. The Lord is going to honor that. Correct. Apostle. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Okay. Will you help me rob a bank? No, sir. <laughs> I'm not sure that. Will you help me rob a bank? No, sir. 
But what did you just do? I said, <laughs> yes, sir. What did you just do? Just now with you? Yeah. I told you no, sir. Why? Because I don't, yes, sir. Why? No, why? <laughs> Because I don't believe in that. So what did you just do? I just stood. Okay. Well, why should you feel bad if you stood? Yes, sir. You should. You don't have a. You know that's where I tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. Because religion has, is so rooted and grounded in this society that if you don't act the way religion says for you to act. Religion condemns you, says you ain't right because you don't celebrate Christmas or Halloween. You ain't right. You can't be saved because you don't celebrate Christmas or Halloween. Well, the question is, which one of them Jesus celebrated? Right. So then he can't be saved either <laughs> based on religion. So you should never feel bad at all. You should rejoice because you stand on the truth. Yes, sir. That's what you do. Yes, sir. You stand on, that's what you, that's all you can do. Yes, stand sir. Stand on the truth, all right? Yes, sir. So they the one going to pay for what they believe in. Any other question before? You know, that's a real thing in the body of Christ. The people, they're, they're praying there. They're religious. I did, and then condemn you because you don't participate in it. But the thing that you shouldn't do, you shouldn't feel bad about it. Matter of fact, you're supposed to rejoice. That's what I did. I rejoice. I thank the Lord that I know that stuff is foolish. I thank the Lord for that. Yes, sir. After service, let's see. Um, it ain't about that, is it? It's not about that, is it? Because um, I don't, I never, once I found out that there, that was wrong, when I got saved, I don't participate in that stuff. When I got saved and I found out that Santa Claus and all that stuff was wrong, and religion was telling me it was right. But I couldn't get over the fact it's a lie. It's a lie. Cause, and the thing about I didn't have a chimney. So <laughs> I got out of said Santa Claus came down the chimney. I don't have one, you know. And back then they wasn't renting chimneys. You know, you could go and buy, rent one for two or three days, take it back. They wasn't, they wasn't renting chimney. I don't know what they're doing now. But anyway. Um, you, the Bible says you're supposed to rejoice. Well, you know, it's a, like a sadness came over this place. Jeez. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're supposed to rejoice. You shouldn't feel guilty, ever feel guilty standing up for what's right. Jesus. If I ask y'all a question, I wonder how many of you be honest. Would you? Really? All right, I tell you what, close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. How many of you, be honest, feel guilty when you stand for what's right? Let me see your hand. study Matthew chapter 5 and ask the Lord to help you to get that out of you because you should you shouldn't ever feel guilty for standing up for what's right matter of fact it should be a, a rejoicing 
you shouldn't feel ashamed standing up for Jesus. If you're the only one, you should rejoice and be exceedingly glad. That's how you're supposed to be. That's how you're supposed to be. All right? You can open your eyes now. Yes. Uh -huh. May I receive salvation? Can you receive salvation? <clears throat> Why do you want salvation? I just want to live right. You want to live right? So you wasn't living right? All right. Come up here for a minute. Put Romans 10, 9 and 10 on the screen, okay? Let me tell you something about salvation. Salvation is for everybody that wants it. Salvation. You can't, okay, let me tell you what you can't do. You can't be saved because you're in trouble. A lot of folks try to get saved because they're in trouble. And once that episode is over, they go back because they weren't really saved. The purpose of salvation is because I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. And so if I want to go to heaven, I'm not going to let you send me to hell because it's what I want to do. Because you're going to do what you want to do. So if I want to go, then it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. That's why salvation is so important. Now, um, you've been up here quite a few times, correct? So what makes this time different? You just want to live different. Okay. You want to live different. sin of unbelief and ask him to come into your heart. You just want to change. Okay. I want you to go to, get your Bible and go to St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter Listen to this. St. John chapter 1. Verse, you got it? Okay. Verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power of the ability of the authority to do what? Even to them that what? Okay. Verse 13 says, Which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh. Let me tell you, explain what that means. When it says not of blood, your flesh, no flesh had nothing to do with this at all. All right? When it says not the will of the flesh, your flesh don't want to be saved. So your flesh do not give you the desire to want to be saved. Then it says, not the will of man. Okay, your mama, dad, or sister, or brother, you, that don't come from you. The desire, okay, let me say this to you. What it's saying is the want to inside of your spirit. If the want to is in your spirit, that didn't come from nothing earth but from God. The want to. And see, that's the difference in a person being saved and not saved. Those of you that don't want to, you ain't saved. 
I don't care how long you've been here. You don't have to want to in you. You're not saved. You're religious, but you're not saved. The want to, that comes from God. That don't come from your desire. You don't wake up with that desire. That desire is placed in you. It only comes from God. It only comes from God. A lot of people want to get saved when they get in trouble or whatever. But this want to comes only from God. And what God does, God puts it in a person's spirit because they are open to him. The word has the power to open up a heart. The word has the power to open up a heart. And when that heart is open, God puts in that person, I want to be saved. I'm not in trouble like other men. I'm not sickly. I'm not dying or nothing. I'm in good health. I'm not in need of nothing physically, but I just want to be saved. You know, I want to be saved. Every person that gets saved get that. And that's what this scripture is talking about here. It ain't coming from because somebody else is saved, because a husband or wife wants you, none of that. It says, which was born, not of blood, not the will of the flesh, not the will of man. It's not because you wanted to. You want to do many things. Go out and have fun, do things you want to do. But this want to, the real one, it comes from God, the Holy Spirit, and it's placed inside of us. All right? And then it says in Philippians, for it is God that <laughs> both to what? I tell you that's where the will come from. That will, that's the difference. Let me tell you something. Every one of you sitting in here, I don't care whether you're a preacher or whatever, if this ain't in you, you're going to hell. You, I'm telling y'all, you're going to hell. If this is not in you, you ain't saved. You're religious, you ain't saved. If this is not inside of you, God ain't. You, that's how you become a son of God. He puts that will. Not it, you ain't. We don't have no, no credit for that. We can't take credit for that. Your mom and dad can't take whatever they did. They can't take credit for that. Nobody can. No human flesh can take credit for this. This only comes from God, the Holy Spirit, the want to, the will. And that's why it says, born of God. How many of you understand what we just said? And I'm telling every one of you sitting here before God and, and Christ that if that's not in you, you ain't saved. And a person can act saved and be religious and be devoted to religion and die and go to hell. You can make yourself do certain things, but not this. You can't make yourself do this. That's why folk, when they leave here, they get in the flesh. You know why? Because it ain't in them. When they leave here, they get in the flesh because it's not in them. That will, they live after the flesh. Because it's not in them. It's not in them. That's why you run into certain people and they have times, I don't want to hear what you got to say about the word. They save on Sundays, but Mondays they're not. Because it ain't in them. They religion, it ain't in them. And you, that's back on Facebook again, you know, where we started at. <laughs> you got a lot of that on Facebook. So that's why I'm telling every one of you, if that ain't in you, this scripture, this scripture right here, Verse 12 and 13 tells us what happens to us. It ain't from nothing. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's not a human thing at all. It's straight from God Almighty by way of the Holy Spirit. 
And you're telling me that you got a desire in you that you really want to follow the word. You really want to follow the word. that desire is in you and you want to follow the word follow the word and that desire is going to grow that desire is going to grow that desire is going to grow picking up Bible down for a moment I want you to repeat after me Lord Jesus I repent of my sin of unbelief and I accept you in my heart to be my Lord. Tonight, I make you my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Lord. And Lord, I'm saved. That's it. That's it. If there's desires there, that's all you need. That's it. I mean, that's it. So we're going to see. You're going you're gonna to be able to bring forth fruit. You're going to change. That's it. Folks, that's it. That's it. When you get that desire inside of you, that's it. Ain't nobody got to will make you study. Ain't nobody will make, make no, you're going to want to. There's a change. That's where it comes from. And that only comes from the Holy Spirit. Brings your spirit alive to God. And God dropped that desire in you. All right. 